Welcome back to Inside Sources. Today, we want to focus on the Nigerian youth, especially with the recent protests that we have seen. And what is the future that the Nigerian youth have? What is the future for Nigerian youth? And today I have a notable Nigerian youth with me in the, in the uh, studio. Is the founder of the Foundation for Investigative Journalism, and it's also the editor in chief. I'd like to welcome uh, Fisayo Shoyombo to Inside Sources. Thank you, Mr. Akande. I normally start a conversation, my conversation around the future of the country, and, and because of what had happened last week, uh, you know, young people are clearly dissatisfied with the state of the nation. Uh, there's hunger, there's hardship, and many of the people that came out were young people. So I figured out that it's important for us to begin to have a conversation about the issues that are important to the young people in the light of the protest. So, so my first question to you, uh, uh, Fisayo, is that what do you think is the reaction of young people to the speech that the president gave, uh, which was meant to at least say that, look, let's calm down. This is what I'm doing. What do you think what, what impression did that leave young people in this country? The first thing is that I'm actually in doubt that what was going on in the mind of the president was let us calm these people down. I don't think that's what was in their mind because the speech did nothing close to calming people down. Uh, it only made people feel, mm, the president has spoken, why, why else are you protesting? The president spent time telling us about what he did in the past. We, we launched this initiative, we launched that initiative. All those initiatives were in place and the people were still dissatisfied. People were still hungry. People were still poor. People were finding it hard to live as Nigerians to afford the basics. Mm. People on the streets are not protesting because they want to own cars, they want to build houses, they want to fly abroad, they want to go on vacation. It's because they want to eat. Mm. And the president's speech did not address how people would be able to put food on their table. And as long as that is not done, going forward, not what he did in the past, what he right. would do arising from the protest, he didn't achieve that. And mm. the people on the streets are still upset, are still angry. Like most people, we do understand that there is indeed hardship, clearly. I don't think anybody contests that. I don't think the president understands. I don't think the people around him understand. Because the president in the first few sentences said people with political agenda. It's not about agenda. People are genuinely hungry. I know the number of people who ask me for money daily. Who am I? Who reach out and say, I need help. We need help. School fees, eat. People are genuinely frustrated in this country. I think people in the presidency have scant understanding of the hardship that the average Nigerian faces today. And that has to be clear, that people are hungry, that of course, opposition would always be opposition. When they were in the opposition, they were interested in protest. So I don't think they should expect the current opposition to behave otherwise. But beyond opposition politicking, the reality is that there is something that unites people, mm. the average man on the street right now, and it is hunger. By the way, I, I was going to say that if you look at the demands, you know, I mean, I had, I had worked in government for uh, a little time before I came back to my day job. It, it, it's almost impossible for the, for the president to reverse the pump price of oil. It's almost impossible for the reverser of that. You know, but hey, yeah, you're right. It doesn't address, some of them doesn't address the immediate uh, uh, problem of hunger. But my, my question to you is that, is it possible, do, I mean, can we realistically say that the demand to reverse the, uh, the, 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 the pump price? There are two things I'm going to say. The first is that I was always for retention of subsidy. Why? The president said it, that it was wasteful that, you know, some people, a clique of people had taken over. Right. It was benefiting a few people and not the public. So the question is, the president and commander-in-chief cannot identify the people benefiting from the waste and deal with them, cannot mm. stop the rot, and then That's ensure important. that it then... Be because the reality is that... So I ask myself, what does the government do for me? I run an organization, mm. pay corporate tax, pay personal tax, almost generate my lights, 
because we, we have to find a way to ha have solar inverter in the office. We can't rely on electricity. Mm. When it's there, it's expensive. Mm. The roads are bad. You know, what exactly am I, am I benefiting from the government as a Nigerian? By the way, the government benefits from me because I'm a law-abiding Nigerian and I pay taxes to the government. Now, there are two things that any mm. president should be very careful about, two economic policies that right. a president should be very careful about. Number one is for the understanding that petrol pump price is connected to the Nigerian economy. Because electricity is bad, we're going to buy fuel for our generators. That's right. what cars use. For the, 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 one of the live wires of our economy is right. fuel. If you touch mm -hmm. it, you've touched everything That's else. True. Everything. Apparently. And then the second is that we are an import-dependent country. We don't export, we don't produce, we don't manufacture. By the way, I did an undercover investigation on smuggling, and some people in government were offended. But mm. it's also about the economy. They are ripping mm. genuine producers off. We are ripping farmers off. Farmers are not profiting. But because people, of cronies of people in government, are smuggling chicken, turkey, but livestock producers in this country don't have the benefit. So we are an import-dependent country. You have to find any way possible to make sure that the Naira to dollar rate is not so bad mm. that it then affects everything. Because we import everything. We don't manufacture. How many things we manufacture in this country? Now, the president came and then, you know, stopped defending the Naira. And now it's that bad that everything is expensive in multiples. So those two things, the mm. president didn't... Look, for me, it was a bad decision to end the subsidy special. on the basis of the argument that it was benefiting just okay. a few people. You can't be commander-in-chief and not be able to rein in a few people. So why are you commander-in-chief if you can't do that? That's one. Then two is that now there's so much hardship in the land, but you can afford to renovate the vice president's office for more than 21 billion okay. naira, President. right? Lawmakers can get SUVs. The lawmakers came on there and deceived the people they could deceive, not someone, you know, not someone like me, that they were going to donate half of their salaries. In the first place, they lied about the value of their salaries. They claimed they were earning 600,000. There is no Nigerian lawmaker, I mean, yeah, House of Rep member who earns less than 900 and something thousand in salaries, not in allowances where they make the bulk of their funds for. Now, even the 50% donation they promised mm -hmm. hasn't happened, you know? hasn't happened. So the people... Well, maybe this is the first month. No, 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 no. They've received July salaries. They had that conversation in the middle of July <laughs> just to placate the public. So but, how do you know that they've they no, Because FIJ tracked it. They've received salaries. One of the lawmakers was on Channel TV. He showed his alert. It was 930 something thousand naira. The, the person who moved the motion for donation had lied that they were earning 600,000. Even after lying, they still couldn't keep the promise of donating half. So if you have people in government who live large, who are extravagant, who don't care, who live as if there is an excess of funds, mm. you can't then tell the people to suffer, to manage and not expect them to grow. Now, I don't support violence. I never will support violence. Mm -hmm. But you see, what you're seeing in those northern states is a real reflection that people have lost their minds. People have mm -hmm. become so hungry that they have lost their minds, especially those who are not educated around the streets. They then don't know. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to know if it's the governor or the president or the lawmaker or, is the, or the businessman, if you seem to live fine, you have your own provision store, you have your own organization, you are riding your car, then you are an enemy. And that's why they can loot anywhere they want to loot. Mm. That's why they can destroy property. They don't see a future for themselves mm. in their own country. And you see, when people lose their minds, it mm. will be almost impossible to bring them back to order to make them think, to make them act rationally. And that's why you see all those violence. I don't excuse it, but you have to understand why the violence exists. It's not everything that you link to opposition. Mm. People are hungry and angry and cannot think straight and will therefore take laws into their hands. Right, you know, I mean, you know, you, you're, you're right that uh, we, 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 we wouldn't uh, support violence, you know, uh, and I think that there, there is a unanimity, you know, around that. But of course, you know, like we explained, you know, some of the things, especially in the north, you know. But I, I am a little bit surprised that um, uh, the the the, uh, the the it's in the north that this thing is actually 
uh, becoming a little bit, uh, you know, disorderly. I remember in um, uh, when we had the answers in 2020 that, you know, it, there wasn't much of, uh, uh, of that much noise in the north. It was mainly a southwest uh, legal center thing. What do you think is responsible for that difference between this time and that time? Because la then it wasn't, it wasn't completely about economic um, hardship. It mm. was about oppression. It was about policemen mm. shooting people, you know, harassing people, assaulting people. That was the original trigger. I see. The hardship came to contribute. You know, there are people who joined because they, they didn't see a life for themselves in the country. But the original trigger was oppression. High-handedness for the, answers. The answers. Right. That's, okay. But this is purely about the Hunger. fact that people cannot eat. That's, that's the difference. Interesting. So what do you think as a young person, you know, the government can do? And now I think it's not just the federal government to resonate with young people. First of all, the government should not force things. The state should not force things. In Lagos at Ojota, yeah. the police were the ones who chased journalists away because protesters didn't come early enough. And the police said, your presence here is a risk to the neighborhood. Police started chasing journalists away. Because the protesters hadn't arrived. Hadn't arrived and they were journalists. And they just wanted the journalists to leave. And then hoodlums took over. And the police watched from a distance. In Ojota? Yes. And hoodlums started New Central TV. There's a, there's a video that FID put out. New Central TV journalists were literally pushed into their bus by hoodlums, within clubs, and we, whatever. And then the police watched from a distance and then turned away and left. Now, especially in Lagos, I can tell you that you can't have violence without the hands of, you know, people connected to the state. Maybe overzealous people, maybe planned by the state, I don't know. But you're trying to force people off the streets. I don't think that's a strategy. It's for the president to... Not like I think it's going to happen, but what the president should have done or can still do is mm. pick to the people from his heart and forget about opposition, forget about people planning, forget about saying international funders are, you know, bankrolling the people who are speaking. Realize that without a connecting, a connecting point, even if they were backers out of the country, mm. it wouldn't have worked. So speak to the people, let them know what you plan to do going forward. Forget what you've done in the past that you're coming to real and mm. those things, you know, mm. are still subject to um, interrogation. But tell the people what you want to do going forward and understand that mm. two things really have to change. The Naira has to be strengthened against the dollar so that, you know, because we Mom import yeah. virtually everything. Mm. Things are expensive. Nobody, you know, a lot of people can't cope. You have to tackle that. And then you have to tackle fuel, the pump price of fuel. You must understand that whatever strategy you are coming up with, those two really have to sorted. come down. And then when those two come down, the prices of commodities will come down. Mm. Then the hardship in the land will reduce. Final question. What, you know, so I, I do know that... Uh, our Foundation for Investigative Journalism has done quite a number of stories around uh, uh, smuggling, you know, around uh, some some uh, uh, contracts uh, that were done in places like Lagos by the uh, by important government functionaries, you know, and I know that there have been quite a number. Of, as a matter of fact, you know, the the first uh, PRO did say on, uh, on 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 politics today. Uh, on this, on channels that, uh, that people are written petitions against you, you know. So, so can you just give us an update? So where are you with, uh, with the Nigerian state? Okay. Um, it's unfortunate, but, you know, I've come to the understanding and the knowledge that there are quite a number of people in the government and security agencies who are trying to frustrate our work. And our work is not about individuals. It's about the country. For every single story that FIG has done, I can link it to something that benefits the country. Smuggling is about the security, the territorial integrity of the country and the economy, mm. you know. Now, um, most, one of the recent examples, heartbreaking to find that a journalist wrote about misappropriation of funds because if the, the office of the special advisor to the president on SDGs says we are going to have a block of classrooms mm. in, a, in a 
in a school. Where was this? In Lagos. Okay. And you go to that school, and the school does not have the capacity to take a block of classrooms. It's not that they didn't build the school. It's right. not that they didn't build the school. The school, even if they wanted to build the school, the school, the building does not have the capacity. To so, take so, it. so did, 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 did you see that money was released for the building? Of course, money and, was and, released. And you have evidence that money was released for the it's building? It's public. It's not, it's the FIJ did not generate the original document. It's public. It's on golf spend. You know? So, so is this federal government money? Absolutely. Okay. You know? And we've written about the people who got the award, the reporter reached out to them, FIJ reached out to them, they were struggling, they couldn't even defend. They came back much later to come and say, oh, they put the project, the project in another place very far because they found out that they soil. So you didn't do soil testing before it is one and something millionaire to build a class of classrooms. The police should be interested, you know, mm. in whether that building, the police did not go to the school because if they did, they would have found that, that. Look, it's not just that FIJ wrote that this project was not done. It's about the fact that even if they wanted to do it, the space for that project did not exist. So was it that they put the building somewhere else? You have to ask them. <laughs> you have to ask them. And now what they have done, abduct a journalist. First PR was saying it's an arrest. The police can arrest, of course. But when you take someone, you deny the person access to family, to friends, to lawyers, that's an abduction. That has to be clear. And then now... That, that, that was your journalist. Yes. And then now, you release him on bail, and you tell him to come from Lagos to Abuja once every two weeks. Now, that's media repression. Now, but, that's, uh, that's but press uh, is, is, is the police going to pay for his travels? No. Not, not, just, not just that they're not going to pay for his travels. Now, after... Why can't he report in Lagos? If, if you have to ask the, the police. They have to answer. Unfortunately, I, I, I wish I could answer. You know, now, not just that, after I've him for 10 days, I use him on bail, and then Norelokpa Ade Fuluri has then sent a pre-action letter to say, we are, if you don't apologize, and our lawyers have said, they're not going to apologize, let's have a case. So you can't have that going on. The complainant has, is about to, or has notified us of our intention to institute a case in court, then the police still say that the guy should be coming once every two weeks, so what are you really trying to achieve? So it's not then, and that's why, you know, Someone like me, I have scant regard for the institution that the police is because it is for the highest bidder, it is for the powerful, for the rich. It's not for the poor man. It's not for the honest man. Well, they won't. They won't say that. You know, no, but the won't. evidence is clear because if we have written that the project was not done, you can't go and abduct the journalist without you as the police claiming to be conducting investigations. You heard this guy for ten days. You said you were investigating. Your investigation did not include going to that school. Mm. Because the school does not have the space for that project. You didn't go to the school. So then you now think, oh, journalists are attacking you. But they will never respect you. They won't value whatever you are doing. Because it's so clear. Look, if you are going to oppress the media, at least do it in a very smart way. Do it for cases where the lines are blurred. Not for stuff like this. There's a lawsuit that is coming. And then the police still want the guy to be coming every day. So what exactly are they trying to achieve? If, the, if there is a case in court, then the police should let the case happen. Well, yeah, have his course. And then you keep saying you want to see me. I don't know what else I want to answer to. You know, <laughs> what my organization does a lot of times is write about people who are victims of fraud. We are mm -hmm. not the ones that the police should be after. You know, we wrote about smuggling. Somebody wrote a petition to the, the police and the police are you know, looking for... Why do you have to look for me? Go and find out if smuggling indeed happens. Look, I'm going to say this on national TV. If the government is really interested in knowing the, the smugglers, give me five policemen, empower them to arrest anybody, give me one month, you will know the smugglers. Mm. Interesting. Just to kill the conversation about, <laughs> about whether Fisai Oshomba has been lying about smugglers or not. Give me five people armed and give me one month. We will produce the smugglers. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you so much, uh, Fisai Oshomba, for your, uh, for your service. You know, uh, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to Inside Sources. I do hope that, um, you know, uh, since we are in a democratic uh, uh, setting, I do hope that these issues will be uh, sorted out under the rule of law uh, and, and, you know, with democratic principles, you know, being uh, at, the, at the bedrock of it. I, 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 I believe that the, the Nigerian police, yes, there are challenges, just like in the Nigerian society itself. But I think they also, have an, they, they also understand that a, a challenge is also an opportunity, you know, uh, to make things well, which is essentially the story of our country. It's the reason why many of us believe that, look, if we lend our voices, 
you know, to write courses, you know, and if we do it with objectivity, you know, uh, sooner or later, you know, the right, the righteous voice will prevail. So, so uh, don't give up, you know, and we are not giving up. Uh, once again, thank you, Sarah, for coming. Thank you for having thank you for me. Your time. It's been my yeah. pleasure.